dear learner welcome to session 3 of course 1.0 english basics for effective communication in previous two sessions we have studied parts of speech and their proper uses this session focuses more on english tense and their proper usages let's begin english tenses introduction and importance the etymology of the word tense is from the latin word tempus which means time english tense is nothing but different forms of verb in reference with time so how a verb performs which form it takes with reference to time is nothing but tense and that is applicable to any language now read the following sentences i take lessons in english language skills i took lessons in english language skills last year and i shall take lessons in english language skills next month what what do you observe here you can say the verb take is in present time it is took in past time and the third sentence talks about future time shall take therefore the tense of a verb reflects the time of an action or event now let us see what english tense and aspects means usually we get confused and we uh, do not understand what exactly aspects means so let us see i have tried to describe that very shortly tense indicates the place of an action or an event in time whereas aspect indicates how an action state or an event is related to flow of time so tense place of an action in time and aspect indicates that action state or event how they are they are related to flow of time at different times let us see in detail so this is this is i hope uh, you uh, must know this tense there there are three types actually two types past present because future is not considered as a tense so we refer it as future time so these are three tenses past present future and these are the aspects simple continuous or progressive perfect perfect progressive so now how a past tense or how a verb in past tense let us say uh, functions at various aspects same in present tense how it appears when it is simple how when the action is going on the flow of time whether it is constant or it is continuous or it has been uh, done or it has been being done what that flow of time is nothing but aspect let's move further and start with present tense what we are going to see i'll tell you the flow we will see each tense its structure and uses then we will see some uh, some of the uh, very effective methods of studying tenses and then we will focus on concern areas problem areas that is confusing tenses and at the end i will give you some tips on how to study tenses effectively let's begin with present tense structure and uses so simply present tense is used for describing actions in present time now this is the simplest way i think to know about present tense if this is referred to past this is future and present is here the current time right let's move further the structure of all tense and aspect in present tense so aspect structure formula and one example i have uh, put here so in simple present tense the structure is subject plus verb its base form and ses plus object so ses i hope you know where to use and i am going to tell i have not taken uh, the examples or the structures with all pronouns here i'll explain right so here in simple uh, present tense the structure is like i go we go you go you go he she it goes and they go 
right? So the example, I go for a walk every morning. The sun rises in the east. Continuous or progressive subject plus am is are plus verb dash ing that is ing form of the verb and object. And I hope you know I am, we are, you are, you are, he, she, it is, they are. I am teaching English tenses. You are learning present tense now. Perfect subject have has verb plus verb and it's past participle, the third form and object. Here I have, we have, you have, you have, he, she, it has, they have. We have studied parts of speech. She has solved all the exercises. Perfect progressive subject have has plus been plus verb ing form object and the same I have I have been we have been you have been you have been he she it has been and they have been we have been studying tenses for last 10 years now oh, I'm sure you must be expecting so when these tenses are used, you are not telling. Yes, it is. It is coming in next slide. Just understand the structure here. We will discuss each with its uses in next slides. Right. Let's move further. And see now uses of simple present tense. So first simple present tense is usually used to express a habitual action like she exercises every day. It is her habit to exercise every day. My dog keeps the house safe. So usually dogs keep house safe. To express general truths, the simple present tense is used to express general truths like medicines are bitter. So it is general truth, right? Self-confidence boosts moral to tell general truths. In exclamatory sentences, beginning with here and there to express what is actually taking place in the present, simple present is used. Like, there goes the rocket. Here she comes. Let's move ahead. In broadcasting, this is a somewhat new use. I mean, uh, we, we, uh, we usually listen, but we are not understanding or we don't pay much attention to this use of simple present tense. In broadcasting and commentaries on sporting events, instead of the present continuous tense, right, to talk about the actions and event, we use simple present tense. Let us understand it with example. Virat now advances forward and hits a big six. Now Virat, it is actually ongoing match and the commentator says like this, Virat now advances forward and hits a big six. Now instead of saying Virat is forwarding now and is hitting a big six, simple present is used. Same, Anuj rushes home immediately. Maybe, maybe from uh, um, the stories, it is, it is just given, Anuj rushes home immediately. Then to express future event that is part of fixed timetable or fixed program. If you are expressing something about an event which is a part of fixed timetable, if a fixed program, then we use simple present tense. Let us see this well-known example. The course on basics in English starts at 11 a.m. Or I would just say the session three of the course on basics in English starts at 11 a.m. on 20th May. The flight leaves at 5 p.m. So it is fixed time, fixed program. So we use simple present. To introduce quotations. So usually when we are using quotations of some well-known authors, we use simple present tense. Like Mark Twain says, the right word may be effective, but no word was ever as effective as a rightly timed pause. Action speaks louder than the words. So pause. So just his Mark Twain's uh, quote to mention his quote, simple present is used and it is here. Mark Twain says, not Mark Twain said, it is says. So we, we use simple present. Let us see next present continuous to describe ongoing action while speaking. Present continuous is used to describe ongoing action while speaking. 
like he is reading a book participants are listening to the instructor next to describe a temporary action that may not be actually happening at the time of speaking so we use present continuous tense like i am reading sudha murthy during this lockdown right so when you are speaking this sentence you may not be reading right it is just a continuous process and you are telling ki i am reading sudha murthy during this lockdown or i am learning swimming during this lockdown i am learning guitar during this vacation and so on at the time of speaking may not it is not essential that a book is in hand and uh, the reading is going on to mention an action that has already been planned or arranged to take place in the near future like i am going to hyderabad tonight the action which is already planned it is planned and it will take in near future so i am going to hyderabad tonight it is fixed my cousin is leaving tomorrow it is fixed so you can use continuous instead of future tense we will see in a future time also present perfect it's uses again to indicate completed activities in the immediate past so next uh, aspect of present tense present perfect is to indicate completed activities in the immediate past like she has just entered it has just turned so immediate there is some reference with to uh, some immediate past so this present perfect is used to express past actions whose time is not given and not defined like have you read the children of lesser god i have never seen him in a pensive mood tense mood to express past actions whose time is not given like when no it is not given so i have never seen him in a pensive mood have you read when yesterday tomorrow oh sorry yesterday day before yesterday one week before one it is not given so we use present perfect tense there to describe past events when you think more of their effect in the present than of the action itself so you are just focusing on their effect than the action like anuj has eaten all the bananas i have completed my assignments and so on to denote an action begun in the past and continuing up to the present moment right the action which had started in the past and when you are talking it is it is just continuing it is just going on she has known him for many years like no she has known him for many years and still she is knowing i have not seen nilesh for several weeks to express habitual or continued actions again the present perfect is used like we have lived here for 20 years he has worn contact lenses all his life so it is habitual or continued action continued right and for it is habitual like contact lenses to express that present perfect is used let's move ahead the fourth aspect of present tense present perfect continuous so it is used for an action that began at some time in the past and still it is going on used with since and for just remember it is used with since and for to denote point of time and period of time respectively let us see the examples she has been studying for 5 hours right she has been studying for 5 hours she is still studying they have been building the house for several months now here the 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 action of studying is still going on that's why she has been studying we cannot say she is studying for last 5 hours no she has been studying for last 5 years is the correct usage then here they have been building the house the building actually had started in the past and it is still going on that's why it is they have been building the house for several months this tense is also used sometimes for an action already finished to emphasize the continuity of the activity right now action is done but to emphasize the activity conti continuity of that activity this tense present perfect is used sorry present perfect continuous is used like why are your shoes so torn the answer is i have been working in the garden 
so the question is asked why are your shoes so torn and the answer it is focusing on the continuity of the activity and he is emphasizing the shoes are torn because i have been working in the garden and there i have got my shoes torn let us move past tense structure and uses so past tense used for describing actions in past time this is the representation present future and it is now past back structure same like uh, present tense we will see the structure of past also so simple these are the aspects now structure and examples now here just change will be in the verbs right so in simple a subject plus verb its past form ed form i completed my phd in 2015 so i am talking about my phd the action has happened in the past i completed my phd in 2015 when to say i have completed my phd we will see in next examples continuous or progressive same subject plus instead of now am is are it will come here was were and i was we were you were you were he she it was they were right i was reading a book when you called yesterday perfect subject plus had plus verb past participle and when an object when he arrived she had already left instead of now here have or has been had been she had been verb ing object when i joined a new college in 2016 my friend had already been working there for last 2 years let us see now do not do not uh, much uh, be worried about the structure and formula but i'll tell you the simple way to remember them and even no need to remember the structures once you use that formula just in next part of the video we will see and the uh, tricks that i am telling definitely you will improve your tenses and you will never make a single mistake in the use of tenses i assure you let's move further and see the uses simple past so the simple past is used to indicate an action completed in the past and the indicators are adverbs of past time like she received compliments after the speech he left for the usa last month so adverbs of past times last after they are indicating that it is in a simple past tense and action is completed as completed already in the past sometimes this tense is used without an adverb of time as well and the context indicates about the time like the girls defeated the boys in the cricket match now here adverb is not given when yesterday day before yesterday last month or what but the girls defeated the boys in the cricket match so when you are talking about this sentence the context is is helpful to define it as a simple past i did not concentrate on my studies it is also used for past habits i chanted hymns for many hours every day that was my habit to chant hymns in some 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 days back let us say or some years back she always carried her sunglasses it was her habit past habit let us move next past continuous it is used to denote an action going on at some time in the past for example she was watching movies all night so to denote an action going on at some time in the past it is it was just going on and uh, the example is like uh, she must have finished all her exam now she was watching movies all night when i saw him he was playing badminton so when i saw him he was playing badminton just note one important thing here the second example particularly simple past is used to indicate later action now here when you are talking about past continuous tense when two past uh well, let us say aspects of past tense come we use simple past to to indicate the latter action and we use past continuous to indicate the action which actually has happened like when i saw him he was playing badminton now playing of badminton was going on already and then we or i saw right so here i saw this is the latter action and he was playing badminton was or is the first let us say action also this past continuous is used with always 
continually for continued habits in the past like in her childhood she was always upset during my college days i was continually doing exercise now here just just keep in mind this particular sentence these particular sentences for them we also use used to instead of this like in her childhood she used to be always upset during my college days i used to continually during my college days i used to do continually so also note that uh, this these for these examples we can use used to in her childhood she used to be upset during my college days i used to do exercise right past perfect to describe an action completed before a certain moment in past and before the happening of another event in the past so this past tense is used when i arrived at the party she had already gone home if i had received your letter in time i would have replied positively i had finished the work before he arrived so to describe an action completed before a certain moment in the past and before the happening of another event in the past right so here let us see now the simple past is again used to indicate the latter event and the past perfect to indicate the earlier so continuous and perfect past indic to indicate earlier action and simple past is always used to indicate the latter action how latter event or latter action when i arrived so i arrived simple past tense this is this is indicating latter action or latter event let us say because she had already left she, her leaving has already happened and then i arrived there so she goes before let us say she has gone before she has left the place before and then i go there that's why here i arrived simple past tense she had already left past perfect this is the first event this is the latter event same with these three sentences now past perfect continuous it is used for an action that began before a certain point in the past and continued up to that particular time in past itself let us see with example at that time he had been writing a book for two months so we are referring somewhere in past at that time let us say like i met him in february and at that time he had been writing a book for two months right so the writing of the book started or began before a certain point of time and when i met him that time also he was writing so he had been writing the book let's move to the third tense now future time referred as future time not future tense structure and uses it is used to to describe actions in future time and the structure is like this now past past present and now it is future structure same now in simple let us uh, say simple present we saw s plus verb s e s and verb object then in simple past we saw subject plus verb its ed form here in future as it is not a tense we use modal auxiliaries to indicate the future time and that's why it is called as future time so in simple future it is subject plus shall will plus verb plus object when shall will so i shall we shall you will you will he she it will they will you will get your certificates after the course continuous subject plus shall be or will be and verb plus ing like i shall be we shall be rest we will be this time tomorrow i will be teaching you degree in english so i am referring tomorrow's time this time tomorrow i will be teaching you degree in english i hope you are getting the uses also when we use this we will talk perfect subject shall have will have verb and its past participle plus object 
By the end of this session, you will have learned all about English tenses. Right? When to use? Again, we will see. Perfect progressive. Subject shall will have been verb ing plus object. Now, this tense is less used. It is not used more because uh, the work is done by either simple or the continuous present tense. So, it is less used aspect of future time. By next year, we shall have been living here for 10 years. So, it looks a bit complicated. So, and the longer, we uh, this tense is less used. Let's move ahead and see the uses now. Simple future. It is used to refer to the things that you cannot control and it expresses the future actions as a fact. Now, things you cannot control and the future actions as fact. Like, you will know your exam results in July. Facts. I shall be 34 on 30th of June. Right? Next, we also use this tense to talk about what we think or believe will happen in future. So, what we think, what we believe will happen in future to indicate that we use this future time like I am sure India will win the cricket match. So, you believe, you think like you are sure. So, you are using I am sure India will win the cricket match. I believe Mayank will be the president of the English club. Let's move further. Now, this tense is often used with the verbs of thought like I think, I am sure, I expect, probably. Keep in mind, simple future is used with those verbs particularly. This tense is also used when we decide to do something at the time of speaking. This is, this is interesting. So, if we decide to do something at the time of speaking during our conversation with someone, we sometimes use simple future. Like, it is very foggy, I will take my car. So, you go out and you find it is very foggy outside and you simply utter to your colleague or to your friend uh, going with you. It is very foggy. It is, it is very foggy. I will take my car. Right. Sir is, sorry, sir is in a meeting right now. That's fine. I will wait. Right. So, somebody has come to meet and uh, the secretary tells that gentleman that sir is in a meeting right now and the gentleman says that's fine i'll wait so while speaking suddenly you decide to do something so you use simple future time let's move ahead simple future future with going to about to and be to now this is again very interesting simple future is not only expressed with the help of shall and will we most of the time use these three, let us say, phrases, phrases or phrasal uh, verbs to express simple future, going to, about to and be to. But there is also difference. When to use, going to, about to and be to. What is that exactly? Let us see now. When to use, going to. If an action is already decided upon and preparations have been made, read carefully, listen carefully. Actions. They are already decided. We have decided to do something. In addition to that, preparations have already been started or made. Like, look at the example now. Have you finalized the dates for the conference? Yes, I am going to show you tomorrow. So, it was decided. It, it, it has already been decided to conduct a conference. And that's why your authority is asking, have you finalized the dates for the conference? And you are saying, yes, the dates are finalized and I am going to show you tomorrow. When you are sure that you are going to show. Next, to express an action that is on the point of happening. So, the next use is of this simple future with going to, to express an action that is on the point of happening. It, it, it will happen in just some time. Like, for example, let us get into the class. It is going to start soon. So, just the point of happening, on the verge of happening, we use going to. Next is again about to, to indicate the immediate future, right? Look at this example now. Let us get into the class. It is about to start soon. What is the difference here? Going to start soon and about to start soon. Here we are using going to and let us get into the class. It is going to start soon. Maybe 5, 10 minutes are there, right? But here to indicate the immediate future, immediate. Let us get into the class. It is about to start soon. Maybe just in one minute or two minutes, it will start. Immediate future. 
B2. So what exactly is B2? It is nothing but forms of to be. How? To talk about official plans and arrangements, we usually use this and let us understand with example, I am to visit your institute next week. So here, M2, a form of to be M with to is used to indicate simple future time. Also, it is also used in a formal style, often in news reports. Look at this. It is again interesting. The CM to visit the tsunami hit areas, right? You must have heard or watched such news. The CM to visit the tsunami hit areas. Here, the simple future is used with the help of that B2. Let's move ahead. Future continuous and its uses now. To discuss the action that will be in progress at a time in future, we use future continuous. I suppose she will be singing when we enter the auditorium. Next, to mention the actions in the future that are already planned or are expected to happen in the normal course. So, it, the, the actions are planned in the future or they will, they will happen in the normal course. The Prime Minister will be talking to us tomorrow 8 p.m. So it is already planned and it will be a, a kind of normal course. So you are telling it the Prime Minister will be talking to us. The Prime Minister will be addressing the nation tomorrow 8 p.m. Future time, future perfect. Let us see. Used to talk the future perfect. Now, the third aspect of future time. It is used to talk about the actions that will be completed by or before a certain future time. Like, I shall have finished this course, English Basics for Effective Communication by 23rd of May. So, what you are doing here now? You are talking about the actions that will be completed by or before a certain future time. Before this 23rd, you will have definitely completed the course. So, I shall have finished. You should have, you will have finished. Future perfect continuous, usually very less used as just I talked before some time. It is used for the actions that will be in progress over a period or point of time and will end in the future. <coughs> Excuse me. I will have been teaching at KIT for 10 years by next June. So by next June, I would complete 10 years in KIT to indicate that, to tell that I use or this tense can be used. I will have been teaching at KIT for 10 years by next June. Fine. So these are all three tenses with four aspect each. Let us see now all the tenses, tenses in one with the aspects. And here I'm going to tell you very good trick to be used so that you develop and you learn tenses effectively. So what you're supposed to do, look at this now. In one table, I have used one verb uh, with all the tenses, with all the aspect, like simple, present, past and future. Past, present, future, simple, progressive, perfect, perfect, progressive. So here I write, I write. So now you can go vertically or you can go horizontally, whichever. Now let me tell you, there are two uh, uh, effects of learning tenses. Some of the learners understand it vertically, like all these tenses present, past and future. Some understand and uh, grasp it vertically like simple, all, progressive, all. So either you have to practice this or this. Like I write, I'm writing, I have written, I have been writing. I wrote, I was writing, I had, I had written, I had been writing. I shall write, I shall be writing, I shall have written, I shall have been writing. Vertical. Horizontal, I write, I wrote, I shall write. I am writing, I was writing, I shall be writing. I have written, I had written, I shall have written. I have been writing, I had been writing, I shall have been writing. Right? Now what you are supposed to do, you do the same thing with all the pronouns. I, we, you, you, he, she, it, they. Just take one verb and do this. Right? This will help you to master tenses effectively. Again. This is very interesting and uh, this is, uh, you know, the area 
the uh, concern the topic of much of my concern actually because this is how i have learned tenses and this is how i actually have mastered tenses what is that one verb 1152 sentences we can create 1152 yes you listen correct 1100 or 1152 sentences with just one single verb how let us see now what i am going to do so this is the excellent way i just i told to learn english grammar comprehensively the entire grammar i am talking actually with tenses so what i am doing here now i am using just one verb i'll just show you right i am using only one pronoun i and one tense that is simple present right so how it goes let me show you and i am going to use these like one verb one pronoun and one simple tense in case of interrogation neg negation vice active passive and question tag right so see here now i write a letter do i write a letter so i write a letter simple present tense let us say assertive sentence do i write a letter it is interrogation moving ahead i do not write a letter now what i have done i have made negation of this assertive sentence i do not write a letter again i have made interrogation of that negation don't i write a letter next i write a letter don't i question tag right we focus to emphasize i write a letter don't i i do not write a letter do i right next a letter now it is the passive a letter is written by me right is a letter written by me interrogation a letter is not written by me negation is a letter not written by me right interrogation of negation a letter is written by me isn't it right question tag a letter is not written by me is it right so you you just see there are 12 various sentences with the help of one verb right and one pronoun i and it is only in simple present likewise one verb 12 sentences eight pronouns we have eight pronouns i we you you he she it they if we create sentence with each of those pronouns we will get 96 sentences and there are 12 tenses 12 into 96 1152 now i know some of you will say you will uh, you know uh, tell me about the uh, future continuous perfect tense which is not used more there are again some problems with some of uh, the sentences but no problem for practicing we can just go ahead and do this just 11000 sorry 1152 sentences with the help of one verb and let, let me tell you this is what i have done in my school days and uh, actually i have not done my one of my teachers has got it done from all of us and because of that only we could comprehend tenses properly let me tell you again i have given yeah special thanks to my school teacher mr kaulige sir who used to you know we spent around 6 months on learning tenses in this way and we prepared i do not even remember the uh, number of sentences but i just remember number of notebooks 6 to 8 notebooks we just filled with this practice and it was very interesting every day one tense one verb with one um, pronoun and just preparing those 1152 sentences and the teacher kaulige sir respected kaulige sir used to check everybody's notebook and used to give suggestions and that has helped me to master grammar english grammar and that was the base for me to select linguistics and complete my phd in english language teaching and the further career so thanks to kaulge sir all right so let us do a practice test now fill in the gaps with the correct tenses here it is a comprehensive test deliberately i have not kept much tests in uh, between because uh, uh, understanding ten all the tenses in one go will definitely help let us do it now fill in the gaps with the correct tenses what you are supposed to do any tense which you feel is appropriate here you are supposed to just fill and uh, as I, ha i have told already in the beginning of the course please have a notebook and pen and uh, write 
answers fast in your notebook i learn english for 7 years now but last year i not work hard enough for english that's why my marks not be really that good then at that time as i pass want pass my english exam successfully next year i study harder this term now i have much more fun now i whatever instead of have what you you are supposed to you are, you are simply have uh, supposed to select and write now i much more fun learning english than i have before the course and at the moment i dot dot english grammar revise revised am revising what okay i'll just pause for few seconds here be ready with your answers even if you just uh, uh, I think about the answers in your mind that is also fine but you should have some of your responses don't worry about if uh, you get wrong no issue let us see the answers now here so i have been learning english for 7 years now the word is for we have seen right to indicate right 7 years and when will be the since since and for can you remember now so if 7 years now if you are talking about 20 2013 so i have been learning english since 2013 but last year i was not working hard enough for english that's why my marks were not really that good then it is about past i as i want to pass my english exam successfully next year i am going to study hard harder this time now i have much more fun learning english than i had before the course and at the moment i am revising english grammar so deliberately i have kept uh, kept the examples in sequence all right let us move ahead now and see the problem areas dealing with the problem areas while using tenses confusing tenses and their proper uses is simple present or present progressive which tense is to be used like simple present is used to talk about the habitual things to tell about the present tasks right now and so and present progressive the action which is going on right so when to use those look at the following sentences now the cake is smelling sweet sorry i am not understanding your point he is not believing in god i am thinking you are right i hope you must have sensed something is wrong in these sentences what is that wrong see these verbs like it is not the cake is smelling sweet it is always in simple the cake smells sweet sorry i do not understand your point he does not believe in god and i think you are right not i am thinking you are right right so next simple present or present progressive let us continue the discussion on the same things to remember here the following verbs on account of their meaning are not normally used in the continuous form so what we have learned here there are certain verbs which we cannot use in continuous tense which are those verbs the verbs of emotion like wish desire like love hate want hope etc what type of verbs are there what type of verbs are they stative verbs right so stative verbs which describe state we are not allowed let us say or not supposed to use them in continuous tense then verbs of thought think believe agree understand know suppose etc we we should not say i am wishing i am desiring i am liking i am thinking i am believing i am agreeing i am understanding i am knowing i am supposing no or even in past i was supposing i was wishing i was desiring no verbs of senses the senses like see hear taste feel smell touch all those senses seeing hearing tasting feeling smelling touching we cannot use in the progress tense verbs of perception recognize notice perceiving perceive imagine remember we cannot use with ing 
verbs of appearance appear seem look verbs of possession own possess belong contain consist we cannot say containing consisting and belonging and so right when we are talking about these verbs on account of their meaning right but look at this now however the above verbs can be used sometimes in continuous tense with change of meaning no in spoken english now we we uh, can use them with different meanings like i am feeling great this morning so here feel is not about your emotions right it is not about your state it is about your physical feel so you are saying i am feeling great this morning physically you are talking she is seeing her friend this evening so here she is used visit for visit so she is visiting instead of that she is seeing her friend this is okay because here it is not a sense it is not verb of sense right i am looking at the strange figure so here look is stare right you are looking you are staring at someone then you can say i am looking at the strange figure you cannot say you are looking great when you are talking about the appearance because look is a part of appearance i guess right so you cannot say you are looking great simply you look great you look gorgeous you look beautiful you look handsome not you are looking gorgeous you are looking handsome and so right but when you are staring at someone yes i am looking at the strange figure i am looking at the person i am looking at that scene and so on okay the next problem area let us see now the exercise on this pick the correct option in the following sentences right so just just uh, choose the correct uh, option and be ready with your responses look how glorious is appearing appears the sun he is resuming resumes his innings on a nervous 99 why are you why are you informing do we inform me about that now right pay attention to this verb now next he is writing writes his poems in english we are waiting for the signal to clear and usually girls are not liking don't like wrestling okay so here i forgot to give the another option you have got i guess the key itself no issue just solve the rest of the sentences and be ready with your answer shall we move okay yeah there is one more why are you or do you always come late usually we use this you know why are you coming late why are you always coming late just be with your answer why are you or why do you always come late let us see the keys now right so look how glorious is no look how glorious appears the sun today you are talking about a let us say universal truth or let us say the action or a time in the simple present so it is glorious not is appearing it it appears the sun and you are just look look verb it is showing about the simple present he is resuming no he resumes his innings on a nervous 99 because it is a part of commented commentary so he resumes his innings on 90 nervous 99 why are you informing me about that now right so i just forgot to strike through the wrong answers so i am explaining here no issue why are you informing me about that now because it is now here you cannot use why do you inform now progress he is writing no he writes his poems in english so general habit let us say it is he writes his poems in english we are waiting for the signal to clear usually girls do not like wrestling and why do you always come late as coming late is his habit we are asking it in simple present tense all right see present perfect or simple past now the next present perfect or simple past which tense is to be used and why the justification 
let me show you very good examples in this particularly uh, case now just just to revise simple past is used to indicate an action completed in the past and may not have any relation in the present context okay the present form the present perfect form is used when the focus is on the completion of action and the Im immediacy of the past so his father drove us back home very fast right the action has done there is no any contact uh, context in present present context there is no any relation in the present context the action has already happened that's why we use simple past his father drove us back home very fast sunil gavaskar has redefined cricket in our country now here we are using present perfect why because the impact is still continued right so the present perfect form is used when the focus is on the completion of the action action is done but there is a relation with immediacy of the past there is there is some relation with the past and the third example is recently the state government has passed a notification on the nature of exams the notification is passed or has been passed and it has some relation continued continually in the uh, in the time when we are talking about the exams so we use present perfect fine so let us do another exercise here try to solve all the sentences and uh, try to learn from those i am explaining in between so your involvement is essential unless that you cannot learn so the first one is sir i have passed my btech in 2015 is it correct use present perfect or simple past if it is correct leave it as it is if not correct it we finished our assignments just now we finished just now pay attention okay third we have seen a tiger 5 years ago okay i have read that novel in class 9th fine ready and we have spent a very enjoyable evening yesterday we have spent is it fine or we need to change because we are talking about evening yesterday all right and the sixth one research showed that exercises help people remain cheerful ready let us see the keys first sir i passed my btech in 2015 no relation now you are just simply telling that i passed my btech in 2015 now when to use have passed when you have some relation with suppose you have completed one course somewhere back and now there is some relation of that course in the present when you are talking about that so you can simply say yes i have completed that course and i know about that you can tell me anything there you can say i have completed that course 10 years back no problem but there is some relation of that course now second we have finished our assignments just now the, the this particular phrase will definitely uh, have helped you just now cannot be in past it is present perfect we have finished our assignments just now we saw a tiger 5 years ago we are talking about the thing 5 years ago so saw not the perfect i had so i have read, sorry uh, we have spent or we have seen a tiger no we saw i read that novel in class 9th so i have read no you are just talking about 9th and you have finished that action then only and we spent because we are talking about the yesterday not we have spent yesterday it is finished done no any relation right now so we spent a very enjoyable evening yesterday and research has shown it has some relation till in present context in present time so has shown not showed research has shown that exercises help people remain cheerful it is true and it is continued in uh, this time as well right so at the end let me tell you let me give you some of the tips on how to practice english tenses we have learnt about the tenses we saw three tenses four aspects of each we saw some of the confusing tenses and we solved some exercises i gave you one formula also give you the best effective method copyrighted method rather i would say i know many of you must have studied in the same way or in the the school uh, 
participants those who are in schools now or maybe in 11th or 12th they also may be uh, studying like this if you are studying like this you are uh, really uh, privileged to have those teachers who are taking you in that way and i have whenever i tell that method about um, 1152 sentences to my students most of them find it very interesting and uh, i have got very good response so practice that along with this how to practice how to master tenses let us see now what you are supposed to do uh, some of the important tip, uh, tips so what you are supposed to do take one verb every day and use in all tenses with all pronouns as i told just take one verb today go write see swim play whatever take one verb and practice that every day you have to write okay in written you have to practice now when you are practicing when you are writing you have to read loud read aloud when you are writing those so like i go to school i am going to school i was going to school i have gone to school when you are writing just utter it loudly because when you are writing that and you are think reading it aloud that helps us to internalize the rule to understand that particular concept as well as that particular rule of the sentence so do this so first one verb in every day in all tenses reading aloud when you are writing that third memorize all these sentences sequentially like as i told you vertical and horizontal right present all right simple present continuous present perfect present perfect continuous present same with past and future and or or you can use either vertical or horizontal simple all simple past simple future simple um, uh, present continuous present continuous past continuous future and so on any you have to what is supposed to do now take a verb read and write write and read aloud now keep it aside and try to just memorize all the verbs and all those sentences just sitting come like i write i am writing i have written i have been writing i was i wrote i was writing i had written i had been writing i shall write i shall be writing i shall have written i shall have been writing like this you go on with all the pronouns this will definitely help you and this is what i actually uh, did to learn the tenses and uh, it has helped me a lot next deliberately speak in english with people around you and deliberately talk on present past and future issues right now let me tell you again dear participants if you master tenses and if you master use of parts of speech particularly again from parts of speech prepositions and articles definitely you will become a very fluent and effective user of english language tenses just the problem is with tenses follow these ways these tips definitely will find out how much time it will take it depends actually on the learners but let me tell you it will not take more than maximum 45 days to master the tenses right 45 days so after that you have to deliberately talk with the people around you and deliberately just start talk, talking about uh, future sometime past sometime present and next is very important think about suitable tenses before you speak now when you decide to think about past so i want to refer the immediate past simple i have to refer the thing which has already gone which has already happened so i have to refer to the past perfect i have to talk about the future coming future so simple present and so on so it will definitely and you will definitely get the responses automatically in your brain right if you do these steps above and yes definitely it is highlighted it is think in english it is very important do not think in your mother tongue before you speak and i usually give the example to my students like how, how is it like uh, you want to drink apple juice and you are putting oranges in the mixture right and you are expecting the apple juice what you are doing you need apple juice but you are putting oranges will apple juice come no what you need to put you need to put apples then only you will get the apple juice same you want to learn english right but you are putting your mother tongue you are giving inputs in your mother tongue that will not help right you have to give the inputs you have to put the apples you have to put english deliberately do it with single word single phrase single sentence one paragraph go on thinking and that will help you definitely to improve your or internalize all those grammar rules particularly tenses and definitely will help you to improve your english 
and look at this now simple present present perfect and simple future these three are the most used tenses so you have to focus on those simple present most of the time we talk most of the time we use this because we talk about the present in the present always present perfect and sometimes simple future yes sometimes simple past is also used but majority of the time we use these three tenses so focus them focus on them more and practice them more and finally the best way the most effective way which i have been using let us say since uh, my uh, 11th standard or 12th is the most effective write daily diary in english start learning the tenses this this course is going to be much helpful to you along the side just have a diary and every day just write one page that is enough and deliberately write about the three tenses right what you did throughout the day what you did yesterday and what you are planning tomorrow simple on one page what you did throughout the day what you did yesterday and what you are planning to do tomorrow maybe next week next month and so on just go on writing this will definitely help you to improve your tenses in turn your grammar in turn your communication skills and at, at the end our final goal to develop our personality with this let me end this session now session 3 on english grammar i hope you enjoyed this session also and you have learned many things uh, from this session uh, of course as i told parts of speech and tenses more important or rather most important to study and i have tried to put my uh, experience in front of you i have referred definitely books and websites for that but uh, this particular session i uh, design on my own experience in my own way and uh, this i have observed and uh, i have experienced may, many of my students find it very very useful so i thought to share with everyone and get benefited thank you very much same message i hope many of you have subscribed i can see the subscription is more uh, just along with subscription just uh, uh, press that bell icon and uh, turn the notifications on i'm sending emails i'm putting on telegram channel as well and uh, uh, trying to uh, update my whatsapp status also for everything but simply for next 3 days 3 days 11 o'clock every morning we are going to a uh, study new session keep it in mind i cannot send you emails because uh, in gmail we are allowed to send only 500 emails at a time and the participation has uh, now reached to around 1100 i have closed the link but still some of my close friends and teachers uh, from various uh, states they requested so i kept it open for some time and now it is 1100 plus so please subscribe my telegram channel and youtube also to get or to stay updated about the course thank you very much again for taking part in this course and actively watching the uh, video the videos will be there for 4 uh, to 5 days till we take final test you can watch those videos any number of times no problem if you want you can download also about the quality i am recording with high resolutions the quality depends on the resolution setting of your uh, phones or tabs or laptops please check those and uh, after the test probably i'm going to just make the videos private so watch as many number of times you want now make the notes you can take the screenshots no issue so this is some uh, references and the resources that i have used with acknowledgement i'm using communication skills oxford university press has very good books on those and i'm referring those Um, I have been referring actually those books um, since say around 2013. Raman and Sharma and this Sanjay Kumar and Pushp Lata. Also this one of Cambridge University Press English Basics by Mark Cholish and uh, Githan Nagarajan and University Grammar of English to understand me and give you. From the websites, let me tell you now. This of course all the websites are fine, but this one is the great one to practice all the examples. to practice maximum about all english grammar part just go to this website continually and visit i have taken examples from this website some of the examples not all the comprehensive test is taken from this and it is very good and it gives immediate response you have to just fill in the blank check your answers you get your score you get the correct answers 
right so the resources are there it is up to you how you use and uh, yes everybody knows the problem of plenty everybody has a lot of references to refer problem of plenty plenty of references and that's why we don't understand which to be used and that is the purpose of starting this course referring those best resources and creating one best for the use of everyone thank you very much for watching thank you very much thank you very much for participating and watching the videos and supporting this course